Hey, what's up everyone, Matt here. This is the Samsung Galaxy S8, the latest in their line, and boy, Samsung is getting really good at making phones. But because this phone is so good, the flaws that it has really stick out. So here are the five best and worst things about this phone. Okay, so first off, we have to talk about the screen. I mean, just look at it, it's incredible. There are no ifs, ands, or buts about it. This screen is one of the best you can get. On the Plus model I have here, there is a 6.2 inch AMOLED screen that goes nearly edge to edge. And because of that, you get a huge screen size and a size smaller than the iPhone 7 Plus. And of course, you get those vibrant colors that you get with AMOLED, infinite contrast, great viewing angles. This is about as good of a screen that you can get. At the sides, the screen is curved, and from a looks perspective, this is great. But when it comes to usability, I'm not entirely sold. I mean, when you're watching a video or looking at your content, the screen is rolling away from you, and I feel like it should be the opposite. It should be coming towards you and making it more immersive. It's just a little detail. It doesn't ruin the phone at all. But, you know, I'm not entirely sold on this curved edge. But there's no doubt about it. It looks beautiful. And that really goes for the whole phone. You have glass on the front and back, and you have metal band around the edges. It's solid in the hand, and it's pretty much everything you want from hardware. So security is one aspect of this phone that isn't so great, and it's borderline infuriating. So there's a bunch of different ways that you can get into your phone. You have all the typical ones that are built into Android. Then you have your fingerprint sensor, like you're used to. You have an iris unlock, and then you have a face unlock. All right, so I'm all for options, but the way they implemented it just makes no sense at all. Okay, so I'm gonna use the fingerprint sensor like I do on every phone, but they removed the home button and now it's virtual, which I'm okay with, it's pretty neat. But they replaced the fingerprint sensor on the back, right next to the camera in one of the worst places I could ever think of. That means when you try to use it, you're gonna have to adjust your grip, you're gonna have to reach around, you're going to touch the camera lens, which is going to get it smudgy. It's just a horrible placement, and there's really no excuse for it. Okay, so there's other ways to open your phone, so I'll use the iris in lock. Well, for me, even though it's very secure, I have to take off my glasses to use it, so that's annoying. I'm not gonna do that every time I wanna use my phone. All right, face unlock. This actually works really well. It's super fast, it works pretty much every single time but it's not secure. You can fool it with just a picture of yourself. So there's really no reliable way to get into your phone unless you're using a pin or just one of the old methods. It's just annoying. The camera on this phone is excellent. It's a 12 megapixel shooter with an f1.7 aperture, and that means you're gonna be getting great photos pretty much in any situation, even in low light. What's interesting though, is this is pretty much the same camera that we had on the previous phone, but that's not really a big deal because it was great there, and it's great here as well. You get great detail and sharpness. It's still a little overprocessed for my taste, but whatever, it looks good on the screen. And when you're actually looking at it on the phone, the colors are vibrant, and it's just a really pleasing photo to look at. On the video side of things, it's much the same story. You get 4K video, and it has optical image stabilization built in, so it's very smooth, and it's just a pleasure to look at. So the camera on this phone is definitely a win. Ah, uh, Bixby. This is another one of the confusing points of this phone. So Bixby is Samsung's latest attempt at a virtual assistant. This one's a little bit different than Google or Siri though because it's more task oriented. It's supposed to help you with using the phone rather than asking questions and stuff like that. But the problem is right now it doesn't really work. Only a few parts of it are implemented right now. So that is going to get updated presumably at some point in the future, but for now, it doesn't really do much and I don't really use it. What is there is very similar to Google Now. It has a card system and it gives you different information, but that's about it. My biggest issue with Bixby is that it has a dedicated button for it. So it's located right beneath the volume rocker and I hit it constantly by accident. So you hit it and it takes you out from whatever you're doing and into Bixby. It's very annoying and right now it's just not all that useful. I'll visit it again once it actually is updated and does everything it's supposed to do, but for now, it's just kind of a waste, I think. This is the first Samsung phone that I can say I don't really mind the software. It's still a heavily skinned version of Android, but 
I don't really care because for the most part, it's designed really well. And most of that junk and baggage that was there before, it's still there, but you can't really find it. It doesn't really affect how you use the phone unless you really want to use those features. And overall, I just think it looks good. And it's running currently the latest version of Android. So you get things like the Google Assistant and pretty much everything you'd want. If Samsung keeps up this trend, well, I'm going to be happy because their software before was horrid and now it's pretty good. So that is what's good and bad with the Samsung Galaxy S8. Overall, it's a really great phone. And even though it has flaws, the fact that it is so good means you can easily point out what the flaws are and hopefully Samsung will fix them. We're getting pretty close to the perfect smartphone. And I think if Samsung really tries, they can do this pretty soon.